Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at a 17th degree equation. Sort of, right? What is the name for that? Vision tick, something like that? Anyways, I forgot. So we have z to the 17th power equals z bar, which is the complex conjugate of z. So first of all, let's replace z with a plus bi. And from here, we're going to get the following equation. a plus bi, that's the name of this channel, right? To the 17th power equals complex conjugate, which is a minus bi. You just change the imaginary part. And then we get ourselves a really nice equation. An expression with 18 terms. If you expand it, you're going to get a lot of terms. You can set them equal to each other. And you'll get a system of equations, which you can probably solve with Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if you can solve it. You can test it out. But good luck with that. So this is obviously not a good method. We could try the following. And this is kind of like a general strategy. Whenever you see a complex number, multiply by the conjugate. And in this case, it makes more sense if you multiply by a plus bi, because we have its conjugate on the right hand side. So if you multiply both sides by a plus bi, then this is just going to become turn into 18th power because we're multiplying another one. And the right hand side is going to become something like this. A squared plus B squared. Make sense? That's going to be a real number. So A plus B I is a very special number. And by the way, this 18 could be a much higher number like 2000 something, depending on the year, you could definitely make that. But basically what happens is this is a special complex number whose 18th power is real. So think about it, not all numbers are going to satisfy it, there are certain numbers that do. But let's go ahead and take a look at our second method, because this will be considered the first method, and the second method will be the following. And we could also talk about an alternative, maybe 2a and 2b, right? So we'll start with z to the 17th equals z bar, which is the conjugate. And now, we're, obviously, we're going to do the same thing, multiply both sides by z. Obviously, that's a better way of writing things because when you write it that way, we get uh, much simpler expressions like z to the 18th. But on the right hand side, this expression can be written as absolute value of z squared because the absolute value is z times z bar. And then you just take the square root, right? It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, make sense now. We got an interesting equation because we have a z to the 18 on one side and absolute value of z squared. Again, this is real. So z is a special number whose 18th power is always real. Now, here's one thing we can do. Focus on the absolute value of z. By taking the absolute value on both sides, right? This is already an absolute value. So taking the absolute value of the absolute value is not going to really change anything, right? You can do it a million times. So we're going to end up with something like this. The absolute value of z to the 18 is the absolute value of z squared. This doesn't look very nice. So make it nicer by pulling this out because you can do that. And we have that nice power property. And at this point, we can go ahead and replace the absolute value of z with r, which is also called the modulus. And we get r to the 18th equals r squared. And let's put everything on the same side. Our goal is to solve for r and then go back and solve for z. We can take out an r squared, r to the 16th minus 1 equals 0. From here, as you know, we get three solutions. r equals 0 is 1, r equals 1 is another one, and r equals negative 1 is the third one. But guess what? r is the modulus, the absolute value, it cannot be negative. Right? If r is equal to 0, that means z is equal to 0 because there's only one number whose absolute value equals 0, and that is 0. R equals 1 means what? Let's go ahead and talk about it. This means absolute value of z is equal to 1. And let's go back to our equation. We had not this one, but this one. Okay? z to the 18th is absolute value of z squared. But we know now that the absolute value of z is 1, so this is going to be 1. Great. Now, this gives us something super duper nice, z to the 18th equals 1, which means we're going to be dealing with the 18th roots of unity. And there are 18 of them, right? 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the one as e to the power 2 pi n i, where n is an integer, right? And we'll probably use the non-negative integers here. It doesn't really matter, though. But by dividing both sides here, like, I mean, the exponents, by 18, z can be written as e to the power 2 pi n i over 18. 2 goes into 18 nine times. And we can kind of write this as e to the power pi n i over 9. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and replace n with certain values and find each 18th root. For example, if n is equal to 0, we get z equals e to the power 0, which is 1. Obviously, z equals 1 is a solution. If you plug it into the original, you're going to realize that z equals 1 is a solution. Okay? And you could also go by this. Remember when we got z to the 18 equals absolute value of z squared? If you assume z is real, z equals 1 is going to pop up as a solution. Yeah. All right. So what happens if n is equal to 1? From here, you're going to get something like z equals e to the power pi i over 9. What, what does that mean? Pi over 9 is kind of like 20 degrees, right? So you kind of need to think about the cosine 20 and sine 20. I don't think we can find the exact values for those unless we can solve the cubic uh, equation that gives us cosine of 60. Maybe there are certain values, but I doubt it. Anyways, n equals 2 will give you another 1, so on and so forth. At n equals 9 is actually kind of interesting. It's going to give you z equals e to the power pi i, which is negative 1. So the modulus of z cannot be negative 1, but z itself can be negative 1, which is kind of interesting, right? Now, this is obviously a method that will work for equations like these, but we could also think of it slightly differently. So I guess we could call that the third method, or like I said earlier, 2b or not. 2b, right? So we're going to call this 2a, and this is going to be 2b. So for 2b, we're going to do the following. Since absolute value of z equals 1, let me pick up from there. Uh, we can write the z as e to the power i theta. Since uh, in general, any complex number can be written as r e to the theta, r is the modulus, but if it's 1, we don't have to worry about it. And now we have an equation z to the 17th equals z bar. Now, z to the 17th is e to the i theta to the 17th, and z bar, as you know, is e to the power of negative i theta. By negating the theta, you're basically getting the conjugate, because cosine is even and sine is odd. And from here, we get something like this. e to the power 7i theta equals e to the negative i theta. But here's the thing. Before you set the exponents equal to each other, because we do have a coefficient of, um, or should I say period, of 2n pi, for the exponential function. In other words, I can do the following. I can just multiply the right-hand side, not both sides, by e to the power 2 pi ki. Let's just use k. We used n before, same thing. Now, from here, we get the following. If you multiply both sides by e to the i theta, you're going to get e to the, by the way, I don't know why that's a 7. It's, a, it's supposed to be an 18. I mean, 17. By multiplying both sides by e to the i theta, we get e to the i 18 i theta equals e to the power 2 pi ki. And then we can kind of natural log both sides and set these equal to each other. And guess what? We're going to get the exact same solutions as before. By replacing k with certain values, you're going to get the solutions. And there should be how many of them? I think 18 of them, right? Including 1 and negative 1. And... Before we finish the video, I want you to take a look at the graph of this. Obviously, this is for real solutions only. You can see zero is in the middle. And then three real solutions. And here's the interesting one, the complex solutions. But guess what? Dot, dot, dot. There are more. If you click on more roots, it'll give you, I mean, Wolfram Alpha. And doesn't this look beautiful, the roots in the complex plane? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.